Okay, finally, this week, we are going to discuss mixed type random variables. And as the name suggests, this, these are going to be random variables where you have continuous parts and also discrete parts. And I would like to uh, go into this by discussing an, an example. And we will start with, with this uh, easier version. Let's say I toss a fail coin. If the outcome is heads, I pick a random integer between one and six. For instance, you throw a die in this case. And if tails, I pick zero. Okay, so 50-50% uh, chance if, if it is heads, I pick a random integer between one and six. Otherwise, I always pick zero. Let the random variable x represent the number I pick. So, Observe that the random variable x can take values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. And we would like to find the distribution of x. Now, another point when we say distribution, um, any descriptive function is sufficient. For instance, if you find the CDF, that's sufficient because it gives you all information you need about the random variable. Or if you find the PDF, or if it's a discrete random variable, as in this case, if you find the PMF, that's also fine. So if it is not specified, and it's just referred to as distribution, any of the three functions as suitable uh, will, will do. Okay, in this case, as you see, um, the sample space is discrete. So the random variable X in this example is not a mixed type, but a discrete random variable. So let's start by finding the PMF of this random variable. How are we going to do that? First of all, we recognize that it's either zero or one through six. So to compute the probability um, of X being equal to zero, I'm going to use the law of total probability and I'm going to um, condition X being equal to zero on the coin being heads or tails. So probability of X equals zero equals probability of x equals zero given heads times probability of heads plus probability of x equals zero given tails times probability of tails. And obviously these are one half. And in this case, if heads comes up, you see I pick a random integer between one and six, therefore the outcome being zero is zero. On the other hand, if it is tails, I always pick zero. Therefore, the probability, the conditional probability here is one. So when you add them up, you get one half. So with one half probability, the outcome is zero. So what about the others? K being either one, two, three, four, five, or six. In this case, the probability that X equals K equals this expression where again um, i've used the law of total probability with the exact same approach in this case now when the tails is is the coin outcome i'm going to choose zero therefore the probability here is going to be zero because it's not one through six on the other hand if the outcome is heads and that occurs with probability one half i'm going to select one of the six possibilities one through six Therefore, each of them has one over six probability. And therefore, this gives me one over 12. So the PMF of this random variable, this discrete random variable is at zero, you have one half. Okay. And for the other six possibilities, one through six, you have one over 12. So this is the distribution or rather the PMF of this random variable. Now, I'm going to change the question slightly. You see, I pick a random integer between one and six. I'm going to change this portion. I pick a random number in the interval one to six. Okay, the rest is all the same. If tails, I pick zero. But if the coin outcome is heads, I'm going to pick a random real number, not only integers, a random real number in the interval from one to six. Okay, now I'm going to call this random variable y and I would like to find the distribution of y. Now you see, if the coin outcome is heads, 
I'm going to select a number between one and six. So by nature, that's a continuous distribution. On the other hand, if the coin outcome is tails, I'm going to pick zero always. So by its nature, that's a discrete choice. It's exactly zero. It's not an interval. It's a specific point. So you see, random variable y is going to have both a continuous portion and a discrete portion. And now let's see how we can compute the distribution. In this case, it's easier to compute the CDF. And usually, um, when, when you are in doubt, uh, tackling these type of questions using the CDF might usually be easier, especially when there are continuous components. So I'm going to see how I can write the CDF. I'm going to look at the CDF at zero. And by definition, this is equal to the probability y is less than or equal to zero. And again, I'm going to condition this on the outcome of the coin and use the law of total probability. Now, the, the only difference here is that we do not have x equals zero. I, I just have y less than or equal to zero. That's the only difference. And this is one half, this is one half. Now, when the outcome is heads, I pick a random number between one and six. Therefore, uh, the probability of that outcome being less than or equal to zero is zero. So this here is zero. On the other hand, if my coin comes up tails, then I'm going to pick a number, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to pick exclusively zero. So this probability will be one. Therefore, the result is one half. So the probability of random variable y being less than or equal to zero is one half. What if I want to find the probability of y being strictly less than zero? I have just excluded zero here. That's the only thing I have done. But you see, in all of the cases, either heads or tails, I mean, if tails, I pick zero. So it's not less than zero. And in, in, in the case where the outcome is heads, I pick a number between one and six, and that's also not less than zero. So the probability of this is zero. So for any value less than zero, the CDF value should be zero, which means I should have a jump in the amount of one half in the CDF at zero. Now, what about the rest? When y is between zero and one, again, uh, how, this is, how is this possible? Um, the outcome can be either zero or a real number between one and six. Therefore, if the outcome is between one and six, it will not be less than y, which is between zero and one. And that occurs with probability one half. On the other hand, in, in the other alternative, the outcome is exactly zero, uh, which occurs with probability one half. And in this case, uh, the outcome is clearly less than or equal to y, a number between zero and one. Therefore, this probability should be one over two. And this means since the CDF value at a zero is one half, it should stay at one half until one. So this is something like it's zero here up to zero. And at zero, it has a jump by the amount of one half. And up to one, it should stay at one half. And beyond one, let's see what happens. When y is between one and six, again, I'm going to apply the law of total probability. Now, this time, when the outcome is tails, in this case, and this happens with probability one half, um, the probability that, well, this should be y, uh, doesn't change anything. Uh, y is between one and six, and therefore, the, since the outcome is zero, 
the probability that the outcome, random variable y, being less than or equal to y, is 1. This is certain to occur. So we see a 1 here. And this side, obviously, again, this is 1 half. But what about this? Now, when the coin outcome is heads, I'm going to select a number between 1 and 6. And therefore, the probability of that number being less than or equal to y means it's in the interval from 1 to y, right? And how can I write the probability of this? Obviously, by looking at the length of the interval, because uh, this is an equal probable selection, unless specified otherwise, it's equal probable. And therefore, uh, the probability of this interval is going to be proportional with the length of it, which is y minus one. And the total length of the, the sample space in this subcase is five, it is one to six. Therefore, this probability here is going to be equal to y minus one divided by five, which gives you a, a total probability of y plus four divided by 10. So the CDF value, for y between one and six is equal to y plus four divided by 10. And finally, when y exceeds six, then the outcome is guaranteed to be less than or equal to y because the, the, um, the maximum value the outcome can take is six. Therefore, when y exceeds six, the CDF value should be one because it is certain that y in this case will be less than or equal to parameter y because parameter y is greater than six. Uh, so I can write this as six less than or equal to y. Therefore, this is the certain event. Now combine this all together, what you get is this CDF function. Okay, so if, if I a little zoom in a little bit, you see um, at the origin at zero, the value is one half. So there is a jump at one half and it stays constant at one half until one. And then it's a linear increase. It's y plus four over 10. And at six, it reaches one and stays at one for the remainder. Okay, so this is the CDF of uh, this random variable. And you see it's a mixed type random variable because in the CDF, you have a continuous part, but you also have this jump here, which signifies a probability mass at exactly zero. Now, if you want to represent this using the PDF, you take the derivative and in this part below zero, it's, it's constant, the CDF is constant, so the PDF will be zero. Again, between zero and one, the CDF is constant, therefore the PDF will be zero. And similarly, beyond six, the PDF should be zero. In between here, we see a linear increase with a slope of one over 10. And therefore that should be the PDF value in, between, in, in this interval. Um, but you also have this jump here. And that will translate as an impulse in the PDF, okay? So you see the PDF is given here. You have a continuous component here, right? It's constant because the linear increase in this interval, well, the increase is linear, therefore the derivative is constant, which also signifies our equal probable selection here. But you also have a discrete component, an impulsive component, which signifies that the random variable y can take the exact value of zero with a probability of one half, okay? So you see, using impulses in the PDF, we can express uh, random variables of mixed type. Okay, so to wrap up, we usually use the PMF to represent um, discrete random variables, but you can also use the CDF 
the CDF is uh, general for every random variable and with continuous random variables, the CDF function itself is also continuous, but for discrete random variables, the CDF will have jumps and in the rest, it will be constant. When you have uh, a mixed type random variable, it's going to have both jumps in the CDF, but also uh, other types of increments. And in the PDF, you are going to observe um, continuous parts, but also in addition, you will observe some impulses describing the uh, probability masses at certain points. <laughs> 